much that we have found eternal freedom in you. God, I just thank you that you are continuing to break chains in our life that are holding us back. You are continuing to reveal who we are and who you are as we stand face to face with you. God, we love you.
to come But you always do You show up in splendor And you change the whole room Oh, how do
Hallelujah. How many of you know that when he arrives in his manifest presence, it shifts everything. It changes everything. It changes the atmosphere. And first and foremost, it changes the atmosphere and inside of us. Not just this physical atmosphere around us. It changes the atmosphere in us. But I have really good news for you today about that. We do not serve a temperamental God. He's not moody. When we sing, you don't have to show up, but you always do. You know what? There's a reason He always does. He made a choice to show up a long, long, long time ago. He made a choice at the very beginning before we fell that he would show up. And he longed and waited for that opportunity. And when the fullness of time came, he showed up. And because he showed up 2,000 years ago, and he showed up on the cross, and he showed up on the day of resurrection, every single time there's a hungry heart, he will show up today. He doesn't have to show up because of our righteousness. He doesn't have to show up because we sang the right sequence of songs. But he shows up every time because he wants to be with you. He came and he sent his Holy Spirit and he will not leave us alone. And he longs for that day when he comes again in fullness that throughout eternity we are together completely and he wipes away every tear. No more sickness or disease. But listen, folks, that's not just a future reality. That is a now reality we're pressing into more and more and more every day. That's why we pray and we sing about our hunger for him because we want more of that reality. Hebrews talks about those that tasted of the power of the worlds to come. I don't want just to taste. I want a meal. I don't want to just taste of the powers of the world to come. I want a meal of that fullness which He is providing and ever-increasing. So I'm hungry for more. Miss Darlene. Shelly. Where's Shelly? Well, yeah, run down here, Shelly. If you have something prophetic, run. Give her a big hand as she runs. Oh, so this isn't my thing, but to get up here. <laughs> but as we were singing that, um, up so much for me over the over the past few years. I saw Jesus in a big white robe, as you see, with just light radiating from him, walking down each aisle, just smiling on everybody. And he had his hands up, and he was he was uh, just worshiping with us. He was worshiping his Father with us, and he was he was shooting light over all of us, and he was smiling and waving at people, and it was so cool. It was so. Cool. Yeah, amen. That's a beautiful picture of reality. That is not a metaphor. That is vision into the reality of what's happening around us. We've been embraced into the Trinity. What an awesome, awesome experience but place to live is inside the fellowship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he, the Word says, he praises God in the midst of the congregation. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Turn to somebody. Give them a high five. Hug their neck. Tell them you're glad to see them. Tell them welcome to the Abbey, to the Father's heart. Then you can be seated.
We're glad you're here on Memorial Day weekend. Happy holiday. I know we have a lot of people out of town this weekend visiting family and friends. We're glad that you're with us. Praise the Lord. They may think Children's Church already started for them. We, this is Memorial Day weekend, and we just want to share honor with you. We want to share together honor for those who have made an act, uh, a complete sacrifice on our behalf for our freedom. So let us share this with you. Thank you, Sam. Hallelujah. Let's, let's give a big hand of appreciation for all of those who have lost a loved one, a relation in act of service for our country. If you have lost a family member, would you please stand And in a moment, I want to pray for you, but I also want to invite another group to stand with these today. The Holy Spirit just put on my heart this morning the need to pray for those that are veterans that have served and lost comrades that were friends, that were brothers, that were sisters in battle. And they carry a survivor's guilt, a wound of why they came home, but not their brother, their sister in arms. And I just really felt a burden to pray for those today, for a healing of that wound. Not an explanation, but a healing and a presence. If that's you, if you're a veteran and you lost a friend, a comrade in service, would you stand? Thank you. Thank you. And maybe you see some of those standing around you. I just encourage you, just reach out, touch them, put your hand on their shoulder. And let's just release the presence of God that brings healing. Lord, we do that right now. We thank you. Lord, we certainly thank you. And we thank the families of those that lost loved ones in service to protect the ideals, the ideas, the, the values, the freedom of who we are as a country. We pray, Father, for the Holy Spirit to bring comfort to them, speak words, value, 
for those family members that were lost, Lord. And Father, today we also pray for those that served alongside brothers and sisters, comrades, fellow soldiers that didn't come home. And the emotions of coming home when others didn't and having life and family that others didn't have the opportunity to, co to complete. As only you, Holy Spirit, can do, would you reveal to them, speak your words of truth to their heart? Reveal where those comrades even are right now, Father? Would you, whatever you want to show them for their very specific situation, Holy Spirit, you bring the comfort that they need, the release and the healing of those wounds for them to not only enjoy but to fulfill your purpose and your destiny in their life as they live it in honor of you and in honor of those who didn't come home. So we thank you for that presence of the Holy Spirit ministering to each and every one of them. In Jesus' name. Everybody said together, amen. Thank you. Thank you. We deeply appreciate that. And I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Perry Ann as she comes to share announcements. Thank you. I just, uh, I will say we were, there was quite a moment there in the spirit just now. And, and um, I always feel really funny myself standing because I never met the person in my family that was killed in the war. He was my mother's first husband and my dad was his brother so my daddy married his little brother's widow and I was standing there just now and Trish was praying for me and I thought I exist because of this whole scenario and I don't you know I've honored him for years I've hung his silver star for bravery above where my kids used to play video games to remind them that his sacrifice bought them the freedom to not play those in German, maybe. <laughs> and, um, and just now, as Trish was praying for me, I thought, my goodness, can I just tell you, it's a morning of divine appointments, and uh, God works good out of every turn. So, I have a word for the offering and announcements today, and that word is adventure. And a loose etymology of that word that I concocted this morning means to arrive at what's about to happen. Isn't that good? It's from the Latin. To arrive at what's about to happen is adventure. So we have some adventurers at the Abbey. And you are them. We have some graduates, and I, I actually don't see either of them today, but I'm just going to let you know. Lisa from the Ukraine, who's been living as part of the Montgomery family, is graduating tonight at, from Lake Country Christian School at 6 p.m. And then Candace, is Candace here? These, both these girls have served a lot in our kids' ministry. I don't think Candace is here today, but she grew up in the Abbey, and she is graduating from TWU. Uh, on or around this moment. And if we have any other graduates, high school or college, that we don't know about, wave at me right now. Anybody? Okay. All right. Well, we want to celebrate because you guys who graduate are on an adventure. You're about to arrive at what's going to happen. Speaking of adventure, we did have a Nicaragua trip coming up. Before you cheer, I just want you to hold your cheer a little while longer because due to fighting in Nicaragua, the State Department has issued a travel alert, which means your tickets can be postponed. Thank God for a government watching out for us. So we are postponing that trip. We are not canceling it. We are postponing it. So I really invite all of you to pray. Leck and Cynthia are back there today, and they, would, they live in Nicaragua. And so we have been praying about this situation, and we just really declare God's will be done. We want a, we want a strong solution, not a Band-Aid. And so we're going to let you know updated uh, facts about that trip as we have them. It's an adventure. I felt like doing a liturgical reading where every announcement you say back to me, it's an adventure. Thank you. 
Thank you. I'm just waxing Anglican today or something. Anyway, on June 23rd, there's a ladies' uh, br- uh, morning event. I think it's morning. And they're going to be watching, we are going to be watching The Greatest Showman. If you haven't seen it, you need to come watch it with us. Thank you. Thank you. I might be wearing a beard. And if you haven't seen the movie, you won't understand that. But, and I might be singing along. But anyway, you, I don't know, I haven't asked permission to sing along, but uh, I feel like it might happen. Okay, now I'm going to segue, I'm going to smoothly segue from sort of announcements into sort of offering teaching, but still announcements. It's an adventure. Put up my first slide. This. She was standing right here, the one, the only. You know her, you've heard her. I got greatest showman in my blood. (laughs) Jessie Spradlin has a gig coming up this Friday night at the House of Blues in Dallas. From 9 o'clock to 9.40, and I guarantee you, I've been walking this love of the arts as a Christian a long time, and I don't know that I've ever seen anybody more anointed to go into what we tend to call a secular situation and be herself and bring the truth with no apology and no agenda but the art so if you want to see that roll out of her mouth and her guitar and her amazing amazing songwriting then the tickets are twenty dollars oh ten see I didn't even plan that mark down just for you from the wrong figure in my mind and on, well, here's the deal. If she doesn't sell 20 tickets, it's 9 to 940, and she's, she's launching her career. And it's right for the body of Christ to support kingdom adventure outside the doors. So uh, you might think, House of Blues, isn't that a dark place? Well, it isn't if you get there. Come on. It's an adventure. Jesse's going to bring the light. How about helping her? Okay, you don't have to go. If you have a conviction against House of Blues, please, I'm not pressuring you. But Paul and I will be there. So uh, so on her Facebook page, Jesse Spradlin Music, there's a link. You can buy tickets, 10 bucks each. She needs to know you did it. So if you just want to talk to her directly and get tickets, she will wait around at the end of the service to help you with that. If she, if she didn't sell 20, which she'll easily do, she has to pay for them. But of, of over and above 20, that's her profit for doing this gig. So she gets a little bit of, not the whole, not the whole 10. She didn't get the whole 10. Listen, starting out is hard. Awesome. Thank you, Leck Heflin, who does love Bob Dylan and things in the House of Blues sometimes. Yes. Thank you, Leck. All right. Then... It's an adventure. I love this. Okay, put my next slide up. I just want to tell you to be praying for our guy, Brian Hartley. I don't think Brian's here today. Y'all, he has a reality show, heavy on reality. He wants you to know it's not just going to be drama. It's going to be about the landscape. He is traveling on ATVs all the way through from, like, North America to South America. It's filmed in 4K. It's green lit. It's going to be available for worldwide distribution. He's had meetings with executives. This is the real deal, y'all. This is our Brian Hartley. He starts filming June 16th. I put a trailer or a promo video on my Facebook page if you want to know more about it. And I promise you, I watched that promo this morning. It had a line in it that said, where the pavement ends. The last frontier, the lost frontier begins. I messed that up. Let me say it again dramatically. I need Mr. Movie Phone, Joe Brown, back up here. Where the pavement ends, the lost frontier begins. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to, so he did say to tell you, please pray for safety, for energy. It's a grueling trip. There's four of them. And, by the way, if you watch that promo video, there should be an altar call at the end. I mean, I watched it, and I was like, yes, I'll go. Not on that trip, but somewhere. (laughs) Anyway, with that segue, I'm going to say, where the pavement ends, the lost frontier begins in our living and in our giving. And I have no apology for how cheesy this offering pitch is. (laughs) 
because it's an adventure. And I do want to say we're a church that we just finished Financial Peace University, did not we? But thank you, Nate, Simmons, and Jennifer for leading that. But I want to say we're a church that believes in the dynamic tension of stewardship and generosity. So if you lose the adventure and you're living and you're giving, I want to tell you that there is a God in heaven today that is fully able and capable and wants to restore that adventure. So if you're having financial stress, I want to offer to you the open system of participating with heaven this morning. Pray about that and take on the adventure. We weren't born for barely get along. We were born for the lost frontiers of life. Brian Hartley's going to traverse the lost frontiers of the Americas and discover rundown places that once had a story to tell. But let me tell you, there are stories you have to tell. And you won't get out there and do it unless you embrace the adventure. The adventure. Arrive at what's about to happen. Wouldn't it be bad if what's, out, what's about to happen was out there, but we didn't just get up and get out there? So as you give this morning, we totally appreciate your giving. We do know that it helps with all we have to do here as a church. But more than that, we invite you on the adventure. So as you prepare to give in whatever way you've chosen, always including the old school adventure of walking it down to the front and putting it in a bucket or basket, let us pray. Father, I thank you so much for all the lost frontiers that are not lost to you. Father, I thank you for the lost frontiers in family. People here are having lost frontiers on the inside of them, of territory the enemy soul. And God, you are leading them to take it back. That's our journey together. And Father, right now we do hold our gifts up to you. And we declare this is the great adventure. And we are fully a part of it. So we dedicate and honor you with our gifts. And we give our hearts to the journey once again this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are released.